season 1984-85 was a highly significant one for Imran. His mother became ill with cancer and he took his first tentative steps back onto the cricket field. When Imran came back into the side and once he had his confidence in his leg, he was as influential and important a cricketer as he had, as he had been before the injury. And through 1985 to 1987, Imran was once again probably the greatest all-rounder in the game at the time. Imran played a key role in New South Wales' 1984-85 Sheffield Shield victory, performed well in the ensuing World Championship of cricket, then produced a superb spell of 6 for 14 from 10 overs against India in a one-day tournament in Sharjah. In 1986-87, Imran, restored to the captaincy, led Pakistan to its first ever test series win against India in India. He made 135 not out in the first test, but he decided that 1987 would be his last year in international cricket. The India-Pakistan rivalry has been often compared to the Ashes, but the cricket hasn't been like the Ashes because uh, the cost of defeat has always been greater than the rewards of victory. You know, if you lost a series, you almost always got sacked as captain. And the players' careers finished if you did badly in the India-Pakistan series. In 1987 at the Oval, Imran led Pakistan to an unassailable lead in the Test Series against England. In the last match, he ensured the series victory, the first for Pakistan and England, with an imperious 118. 100 in what he says will be his last test match. A great performance from Imran Khan, beautiful innings. Following his personal triumph against England, Imran led Pakistan in the 1987 World Cup. But the unfancied Australians upset the Pakistanis in a semi-final and went on to win the series. Imran's career was over, or so he thought. Javed Miandad led Pakistan to a home series win over England in 1987-88. But it seemed the whole country wanted Imran Khan to return. Javed resigned the captaincy and Imran made his comeback for an outstanding three test series against the West Indies. Imran was persuaded, as he says, uh, against his better judgment to come back and play in that series. And the series turned out to be one of the, um, one of the finest series of the 1980s. Uh, which Pakistan, for a fair part of it, looked as though they would prevail, but in the end, um, the series ended with a 1-1 draw. We were the only team at the time who always came close to the West Indies to beating them, but never could. And I think we really, really played amazing cricket there. The first test we won, the second test match we draw, and the third test match we lost. So it was a very close series, and West Indies at, in 86, 88 was one of the best sides in the world. It was very difficult for any team to even come closer to West Indies than Pakistan. Pakistan team did under Imran. I think Imran Khan uh, gave a calmness and a, a direction to a cricket team. And they were one team that actually matched the West Indies uh, home and away uh, for test matches uh, when he was in charge of Pakistan. Imran ended his test career with a win over Sri Lanka, and then led Pakistan to victory in the 1992 World Cup. He's beaten the mid off fielder for four more. Good shot. That's his 50. 88 balls for his 50. Throughout 1992, you could see the force of Imran's personality really carrying Pakistan. Uh, they had a lot of good players, uh, but they lost three out of their five matches. And, and uh, you know, one more, one more loss, they, they were out of the tournament. And I guess something snapped and something happened, and then, then the team turned around. And Imran, uh, started batting at number three, scored runs there, and somehow he you know, got the best out of his, all his teammates. Imran Khan in particular was a very mentally strong man again and a great leader. When Imran Khan took 10 others with him out onto the field, the 10 others that went out there with him believed in him, believed in the team that he was leading and believed that Pakistan could achieve anything. That is the greatest thing about Imran Khan. Imran Khan is when he saw a victory, what a great victory. In retirement, 
Imran set himself the monumental task of raising the money to build a cancer hospital in Lahore in memory of his mother. As he fought to raise funds for the hospital, Imran became a focus, a champion for Pakistan's underprivileged. By 1997, he was campaigning for political office. Every cricketer wants him to succeed. Uh, most of the Pakistanis do want him to, to succeed, but it's a, it's a different ball game uh, politics. You know, he, he sounds very positive, and I hope that uh, you know, he, can, he, in a political setup, can make a contribution as he did in, in cricket. Not many people managed to become more famous after being cricketers than they were as cricketers, but Imran has managed that. Um, he's become a strident politician in Pakistan. He was one of the most fervent op opposers of the uh, Musharraf regime, uh, and uh, he's, his movement for democratic change is, uh, is never quite taken off politically, but he, he has put him in the spotlight. Basically, he is one of, he's possibly the global spokesman for Pakistan politics these days. Uh, he, of course, married a socialite, Jemima Khan, uh, Jemima Goldsmith, as was. And so for a time, he was very much on the, the social whirl in, in London and, and everywhere else that social worlds occur. And uh, he was, uh, and also chari charity wise he, he established a cancer hospital uh, in memory of his of his mother who died of cancer uh, generating huge funds I think right now uh, Imran's Imran has been doing amazingly well in in charity with his hospital Shaukat SKMT Shaukat Khan and Memorial Trust where poor, poor people uh, uh, get uh, free treatment cancer treatment which is very expensive and for that he has to raise money all year round every year round about 40 to 50 million dollars I reckon if I'm not mistaken uh, and as far as in politics I think people are taking him seriously now he speaks from the heart and one quality I know Imran and I can vouch for him that he's a very honest person and I think honesty uh, is, is a big requirement in our politics back home Whoopo. there it is and it is six just as Imran Khan fought his way to the pinnacle of cricket success, it would be premature to write him off as a future political force. For the present, though, he leaves behind the record of an astonishing all-round cricketer and a leader of rare quality. Imran was definitely happier being a leader. I mean, he knew his own mind uh, and uh, spoke it very articulately. Uh, and I mean, it's not impossible to imagine him becoming Prime Minister of Pakistan, which he seems to aspire to. So uh, you know, he, he was a genuine leader. I think he had a tremendous effect on, on, on Pakistan cricket because he influenced so many of the younger bowlers coming through. I think they all look up, looked up to him, they all respected him. It's actually a pity in a way that he's not more involved there or hasn't been more involved from a cricketing point of view throughout time since he's retired. Clearly he's had other ambitions and he's gone into a totally different field of life and walk of life. Uh, he was, I thought, quite outstanding for Pakistan cricket and uh, not all that's happened since he's gone has uh, been of the same quality. Imran Khan played in 88 test matches. He made 3,807 runs at an average of 37.69. He made six centuries. He took 362 test match wickets at an average of 22.81. In 175 one-day internationals, he made 3,709 runs at 33.41 and took 182 wickets. You are rated him round one of the one of the finest all-round cricketers that I've ever seen, and and he was a great captain, a tremendous captain, and I mean the players respected him. They held, he held them together. He held the Pakistan team together. He's been a colossal figure off the pitch as well, which is given how colossal he was on the pitch, is is a remarkable achievement. I got to play Imran in my first series, and uh, he was he was a great inspiration, just by uh, looking at him, the way he conducted himself, and uh, so disciplined he was. Uh, it's it's a it's a sign of a great great sportsman. Imran found the right guys, uh, gave them freedom, and told them that you know, you just go and play, and I, I'm there to look after everything else. And and people looked up to him. You know, if you. I, I was speaking to Ramiz Raja the, uh, a couple of months earlier uh, and he, he, so he was describing Imran Khan as a, as a leader and he said that, you know, when he was in the dressing room we were in awe of him. People called him a bit of a dictator. 
but I, I it's, it was kind of leadership that Pakistan needed at that point. And uh, yeah, without him, Pakistan couldn't have won the World Cup. Pakistan couldn't, wouldn't have been the team that they were with for those three or four years. His bowling statistics place him amongst the finest of all time. And he could have secured a place in most test teams as a specialist batsman. But it is his exceptional leadership qualities that elevate him beyond even the greatest of his peers. Imran Khan's all-round ability, force of character and integrity, have earned him a place of honor amongst ESPN's legends of cricket.